This is about some websites that the CIA made around 2010 and they were used for their assets, the people that they recruited or coerced in target countries like Iran and China to spy on those countries. These were the websites that those people would give what they spied back to the CIA and those were exposed and one of them was Star Wars themed, which is kind of cool. Before those websites were uncovered, I had heard rumors that many, many CIA agents in China had been caught. This 2018 article wasn't a major thing, but we didn't know how. They're starting to emerge that some public websites were compromised, but we didn't know any examples. When I heard about this, I'm interested in Chinese politics. I even said, oh, do we know any of them? I even asked on Quora and Chris, engineer and former technician at the US Navy said, you're dumb. Obviously, the CIA is so smart, they never leak their websites. Well, Chris, fast forward to 2022, and an article emerged with a few links. So I only heard about this in 2023. I was browsing YouTube and this video popped up from Darknet Diaries. I didn't watch the video, I just clicked the link and uh, that's it. So it's a Reuters article where some of the ex-spies were complaining that the CIA didn't treat them well. <laughs> the CIA used us and dumped us and they gave a few websites. This is an example of the, one of the websites that was used. This is a reconstruction from the Reuters article. As you'd expect, there's a, a login field where the agent would go and type a password and would use an encryption to talk to the CIA. But writers only gave two URLs directly on the article, but they also gave like seven or eight screenshots in total. From those screenshots, it was rather easy to find out all the domains, the seven or eight domain names, because either they were like on the title of the page, this is one of the pages, or if you inspected the, the page's source, the URL for the images had a website. So this activegaminginfo.com, this Chinese website, was one of the websites. So they basically gave away seven or eight websites. But they also said that they had found a port of 350 or 800 or something like that websites. And when I read that, I was like, oh, it would be cool if you could find a bunch of them, right? But they didn't disclose them because they didn't want to cause trouble to the agents. But I said, okay, I'm going to try anyways, it's been 10 years, let's do it. The coolest things that I found, one, the Star Wars website. <laughs> that was pretty awesome, because most of the websites are extremely boring and they didn't have pop culture references like this. Uh, the Rogers article basically gave all those that had pop culture references, but they missed this one and I'm really, really glad, because they want to reveal it. So this is awesome. And the other cool thing and much more serious is the USA spying on its allies. By allies, I mean democracies, which we know, of course, are not really allies. <laughs> so, for example, Brazil. We know which country those websites target because of the language. Some languages could be many countries, but our languages could only be one country. For example, Brazilian Portuguese, they are spying in Brazil. Snowden had already talked about this, and there are many other relations. We know they spied in Brazil, but it's really cool that you get this uh, Wayback Machine image. You have an actual link. You can see it live on, the, on this link in the web, Wayback Machine and you can see the website, more or less as it was, so that's kind of cool. Germany, Dedrick Online, I don't speak German, but it's German. France, Le Sumum de la Finance, I speak French. Italy, Attività Estreme, and many other democracies, so it's kind of cool. Now I'll just talk a little bit about how I found the new websites that are not given by Rogers. So the first and easy thing was they used sequential IPs <laughs> for the websites and writers themselves mentioned that. Uh, from that, it's quite easy to find other websites. It's just a, a question of how good is your data? Because the websites are down now, so it has to be historic data. The first website that I found some easily accessible on the web browser historic data was this one, viewdns.info. It's not complete by any means. I, I pieced data from many sources. But this one was the easiest one to use and the first one I found on Google and I, I found some new domains and I was quite excited. I, I took activegaminginfo.com. So if you go there, you can do an IP history and you can see, oh, for this domain, what are they, all the IPs that have served that domain? And so here we found, oh, 2012, this is one of the IPs that served that, that domain. 2024, I don't care, 2012, yeah, that's the one. And then if you take that IP, there's another tool which searches, you know, for this IP, what are all the domains that have been historically hosted on that IP? If you search one by one in the browser, but then they have an API, you can find other nearby IPs. And that's how I find my first hits. 
So here, for example, in a nearby IP like 149, this was the 148. So the next one had a likely hit. And then if you take the domain name, you can go on the Wayback Machine and you can confirm that uh, this has some similarities with the others, so it's definitely a hit. The problem with the Wayback Machine is that you have to have the domain name. They don't have any IP exposed. They have the data, but they don't expose it. So we have to do other sources to find the domains. Okay, so that was the easy part. The hard part is finding new IP ranges. Then I, res I tried a bunch of random stuff. Uh, the first way I found new hits on new ranges was through the 2013 GNS census, which is published on this random new site's website, and it was very likely to obtain via an illegal botnet, because it's quite similar to 2012 uh, botnet dump like this. So some guy hacked a bunch of routers, and then instead of using them to do something evil, the guy used them to explore the, the net and publish the data publicly, which is amazing. This guy is, is awesome, but it's a no who, who, who published this anonymous. And their data looks like this, as you'd expect. They, they really went for all each IPv4. They were pinging every single IPv4 ever. Because IPv4, you could do that still with a botnet. And just selecting a few random domains, so Amazon.com on this date was served at this IP. You know, and they have that for all the they could find. Then I took that, I dumped it into SQLite which is a local SQL database, which I love so much, it's so cool. And started mining that and trying to find new domains. One of the main things that helps, part of the fingerprint to help identify the sites, was that the CIE used exclusively almost dedicated servers, so you have one site per IP. And this is the case for not many websites, at least nowadays. At the time, I'm not sure, but at the time, I think too they were a minority, so that makes it easier to find them. With this data set, you have to search which IP only has one domain. So that narrows things down a bit. The other thing that I used, the Wayback Machine API, those websites, they had four communication mechanisms. JAR, Adobe Flash, JavaScript, HTTPS. Uh, yes, HTTPS, <laughs> it's true. And each one of those has certain URL patterns on the path part of the URL, and that's how they communicate. The Wayback Machine, you cannot search in cross domains, which is a shame. You can only search for this domain, does it have this path? So you need to have a big domain list. By using heuristics, I started narrowing down a bit and I managed to find a few others. And then I noticed, oh, the Wayback Machine does not block Tor. I scripted 100 Tor IPs, speed things up 100x. Um, that helped a lot. Basically, there's a funnel, you know, and you start narrowing down more and more likely hits, and then you just look at them manually at some point. And the other thing which was major <laughs> and is very cheeky and very heuristic is one third of the hits contains the word news on the domain name. Uh, and I used that heuristic and it was extremely <laughs> effective. So when I started finding some new hits, I always put them on Google from time to time and see if other websites have that domain because they might have other of the hits. There's quite a few that appeared on Chinese expired domain trackers, which are websites that track for this date, 2012, March 6th, those domains expired. I think the goal of this website is like commercial users to sell the domains afterwards, but I used them. They were highly throttled, but with some patience, I scraped them all and I put it on GitHub, another little data set and contribution to the community, which is kind of cool. So finally, like I said, I'm not a, an expert on any of this. I just Googled and tried stuff out. If you have any data sources, which you know, historic data sources, because those websites are down now. So historic data so sources or any ideas of through the print fingerprints, do let me know. If you find something, you will be extremely clearly credited on the article and on Twitter.